Welcome to the Building on a Budget video series. In this series of videos, I will help you choose which boxes you will need to build a competitive list for the keyword of your choice. Now, each of these videos is focused on a specific faction. So obviously watch the one that is associated with the faction that you are interested in. Then of course, we'll go through each keyword and I'll give you which boxes that I think are good starting boxes for that keyword. Now, the goal of each of these sets is to make a competitive list with some flexibility if possible. But also keep in mind, we are on a budget, so that definitely changes some of the choices that I would suggest to somebody that could just buy the entire faction, of course. So we're going to focus on trying to buy ideally two or three starting boxes, and then I give you suggestions on how to expand from there and what boxes I would recommend. Now, each of the lists that I give you tend to focus on that keyword and good versatile models. I tend to avoid taxed in models and I tend to avoid out of faction models that are within that keyword. Now, obviously, if the model comes with the master box, then I'm not so worried about that. But I avoided models that you have to buy an out of faction box and get a bunch of out of faction models just for that specific model more often than not. Now, there are some exceptions to that rule just because the power of that specific model is just really needed to make a list very competitive. But if I could avoid doing that, I definitely did so just for budgetary reasons. Now, of course, these are all my preferences. A lot of people will argue a lot of these. And when I submitted these to the public at large, there was a lot of debate as to which boxes were better or worse but I tried to adhere to these four principles when in doubt. So everything I suggest here, you can always take with a grain of salt and you should do your own research if you're not sure about it. Now, as far as the pricing, I use everything from the weird store and I'm also not accounting for any older boxes, no M2E or M1E versions of the models because you may be able to find those, but not everybody will be able to find those. So everything is based on the M3 boxes primarily. Of course, if you can find the older boxes or find individual models, you of course can get quite a deal and start your keyword a lot more cheaply if you want it. Now, as far as the actual list, it's essentially I have them sectioned off by colors. The green models are, or the green boxes I should say, are the ones that you will need to start the list. You need these to make a full 50 soul stone list. And these are the ones I think are the best picks. Obviously the first box is always the master box because you'll need that model on its totem. And then I suggest I what I think is probably the best box to help fill the master box and make a 50 soul stone crew. In some cases it's more than just one model just because you you didn't have enough models to make a 50 soul stone list. In some cases others it's just it really really helps to have a couple other options as the case may be, because maybe the box models are not that good, and I really don't recommend taking those in some cases. The yellow ones are the secondary purchases. These generally really increase the power level and give you a lot of good options to expand this crew or just make it really tuned. So these are the ones I would definitely recommend next. These are an order of purchasing as far as my preference. You can obviously get them in a different order if you feel like certain ones are more vital to how you play, but that's generally how I establish those is the best to the worst as far as what will bring you the most power to that crew. Next up, we have the orange boxes. These are designed to add a lot of flexibility. These tend to be models that you don't need, but they will definitely help in the right circumstances or the right scheme pools, things that you don't necessarily need and you can hold off on getting, but they're definitely gonna help you cover the gamut of scheme pools, basically. And then finally, the red. The red options are purely optional. Red does not mean they're bad models. It does not mean they're not great models and can make really powerful lists using them. But red generally means these are things that are in the keyword or versatile models that are left that I feel like you don't really need them necessarily to make a really, really good list. So these are very optional. If you think a specific model is great for your playstyle, then by all means go get it. But these are ones that 
you really, I think you can avoid. All right, so with that said, let's get into the list. For the ancestor slash retainer keyword, we start with Jan Lowe's core box, and then we go with Eternal Servitude. You're starting with Eternal Servitude because you want Manos, who has a leap, who has Lantern of Souls, which lets you one-shot demise models and turn off their demise. And then he also has the built-in suits because he can ping other models to get the suit that he needs. He is just an amazing model that will fit in basically any crew. And of course, he fits great in this crew because it's his keyword. Then we have Yin, who is a good, fast scheme runner with flight and move six. It's going to be able to rocket across the board and do some interacting for you. Toshiro is a summoner. He's going to summon your Ashigaru, who are incredible tanky models for their cost, and being able to summon them is a little bit better. It is a bit higher of a cost to do so now, because he did get nerfed a little bit, but it's still a good combo. And then as far as the models out of the core box, you're going to be using Azamu, who is your basic beat stick model, who's fairly tanky. And then your Gokudos, whenever your other named models die, you can bring them back onto the table, replacing the Gokudo with that model, and then the Gokudo gets summoned on a table edge. So very unique reanimation mechanic where you're bringing back your models and just replacing with this model. Moving from there, you have the Descendants and Guardians. You're taking this for Chiaki primarily. Whenever your other guys die, they put out these upgrades on things. She can rip out that upgrade from them and put it on another model without them dying. So you can get some interesting combinations by giving like some of your other models regen and stuff like that without having to lose your big models in the first place. So great piece there. Sun Quang is an interesting piece. He's a good healer. He's basically, if you have hard to kill, he becomes really good because he can keep those models above the hard to kill line. Otherwise, Yan Lo does most of the healing for the crew, so I don't know if you necessarily need him, but he's got some interesting tech uses. Kamenu are a fairly tough, cheaper model with armor 2, I believe, and they can jump around a little bit, so not a bad model. And then the Dead Rider, of course, fantastic piece. So you can always add that to the crew, and you have a solid tournament list with that. For the experimental keyword, we, of course, start with McMorning's core box, and then we will buy the Rogue Necromancy box. The Rogue Necromancy is a great 10-point beater model. It's going to have a lot of healing with all the poison stacking, and it can blast out poison if you want to go that route, or it can just hit pretty hard with its min 3 damage. The other models that you would include in the starting list are a lot of Flesh Constructs because Flesh Constructs are actually really good models and they are even better with Grave Spirit's Touch because they become really, really hard to kill and they can hit fairly decently as well. Moving into the yellow options, we have the Dead Rider. You're going to hear this model a lot. This thing has fantastic stats. It has Ride With Me to carry guys forward. It can drag models across the board with its trigger on its attack. It's a min 3 attack. It's pretty tough because it has the damage reduction with the fate tokens. And it can do a massive ultimate, if you will, and pulse out and hit a lot of models for a lot of damage as well. I've seen this thing clear out entire crews on that bonus action. So if the opponent doesn't deal with it, this thing can be a game changer. As far as the other yellow options, we have Surgical Staff. You're taking this primarily for the nurses, just because they are great healers and buffers. Rafkin you can take if you want to do a poison stacking build because he has ways to help with that. That being said, I don't think he's a great piece, but if you want to play that style, you can. The autopsies you're mostly taking if you want a really cheap but somewhat durable model just because they have a lot of wounds. Moving from there, we have Stitched and Sewn, the Kantaro. This is the reason you're taking these boxes because these guys are pretty good models that can hit pretty hard on charges and they have a ride with me. Plus they drop out corpses to let McMorning summon in flesh constructs. Or if you take that upgrade where you can eat corpses to get soul stones, you can also go that route with McMorning. The little gassers, they're just not a very good model. If you want a cheap little model, take the canine remains or the guild autopsies or something like that. So speaking of the canine remains, they are an orange option. They're not going to survive very well, but they are pretty quick and they are pretty cheap. You can also summon them with Sebastian, so if you want to have those summoning options, go ahead and pick up this box. 
Finally, we round out things with Bring Out Your Dead. This is for the Grave Diggers because they have some interesting tricks. One, they can get out corpses, again, to summon flesh constructs, or canine remains if you're taking Sebastian. Plus, they give you some corpse tricks that you can do. The other thing that I would take them for is Blasphemous Ritual. They can get the corpse markers out to immediately start pulsing out focus to all your flesh constructs and your necromancy, so they can all start hitting fairly hard. I think that's the better route to go with them. Mortimer is just, he's just an awkward model. He does a little bit of everything, but does nothing well, so I wouldn't bother taking him unless he gets changed. For the forgotten keyword, we start with Molly's core box, and we start with the Lost. The Lost is going to give you Archie and three Kruligans. All four of these models are great models. Archie gives you a Leaper that can hit with min three. He also has Flurry, so a pretty good mobile beat stick. That being said, he can be kind of squishy, so you want to be a little bit careful with him because if they put in a lot of focused fire, he will go down. The Kruligans kind of go hand in hand with Archie because they have the fantastic by your side ability, which lets them jump anywhere on the board next to an enforcer forgotten model or better. There's a couple different options there. So really, really good schemer. They're also pretty durable for their cost. As far as the rest of the core starting crew, you have the Rabble Risers, which are a pretty decent hitting mid-range model. Moving into the yellow boxes, we go with the Rogue Necromancy, as we mentioned before. It's just a solid mid-range hitter. It loses a little bit of its healing because there's not as much poison going on here, but it's still a great piece. Then we have Call to Madness. This gives you the Forgotten Marshal and Night Terrors. Night Terrors are also a decent scheme runner. They're good against shooting crews more so than maybe the Kruligans. The Forgotten Marshal can summon your Rabble Risers. This is probably the more common take from this box just because Rabble Risers are really good and being able to summon them is fantastic. And then finally, you have the Dead Rider because, as we mentioned, and we're going to mention over and over, the Dead Rider is just a beast, and it can go into any crew in Rezzers. For the Red Chapel keyword, we have Seamus' Core Box, and then we start with High Society. This is going to give you a decently mobile crew with a lot of movement tricks. So, bet she can pop out of corpse markers, and then when she gets attacked, she reburies herself. So, she can bounce around the table quite a bit. The Doxies are a really good model for being able to move enemy and your own models around as needed. And they have a decent attack, but they're mostly there to be manipulating the battlefield as far as placement of models. Dead Dandies are a decent cheap model. They're mostly there to help you get extra corpses down for either Seamus or if you want to get Blasphemous Ritual, which is not a bad option because Seamus really, really likes focus. As far as the rest of the models, Rotten Bells are a long-range lure. They're still very durable for their cost. Their lure has lost some range, though, so not quite as useful as it used to be. But it can help get your own models in position or pull enemy out of position. Madam Sibyl is a decent tank slash beater. Moving into the yellow boxes, we have the Dead Rider because it's an awesome model. Going from there, we have the orange ones. We're going to go with the Carrion Emissary slash Effigy with Carrion Fate. People have very mixed opinions on this model. Some people love it, some people hate it, so I will let you decide for yourself which one you are. It puts down its coffin markers, which Seamus can then jump to, plus it gives him a zombie, which he uses as a corpse to do his fourth AP action. The problem with this model is it has a zero inch reach, which means even small 30 millimeter bases are going to engage this thing at one inch and it's going to be dead in the water and it's going to have to waste an AP. So it's kind of effectively slow a lot of the time. The other kind of downside to this is you really need the residence of Rottenberg as well, which is a $50 box for mindless zombies because you want to be able to have the zombies whenever you use the coffin markers. Asura's not great. There's some tricks you can do with her, but most of the time it seems like it's not quite worth it, but you can mess around with her if you want. And then finally, we have the Mourners. These are going to be giving you some Ruthless turnoff tech, mostly. So it turns off Ruthless for enemy models, and you do have a lot of models that are terrifying or manipulative, and being able to turn that off is fairly useful, and that's the main reason you're taking them. 
For the Revenant keyword, you start with Rivas Corbox and you get the Draugrs. This will give you a fairly well-rounded crew to start with and it's one of the cheaper starting packages. This list is primarily going to focus on getting out a lot of burning on your own models and then having Riva use all the burning to get plus flips for everything. She is the workhorse of this crew, so you want to protect her. The shield bears are there to help protect her, and they're also fairly tough, especially with Grave Spirit's Touch. The Draugrs are pretty good mid-range hitters, so you're using them mostly to do some absorption and some beating. And then Vincent, he's an okay shot, but mostly you're going to take him for anti-summoning, and he's the first model to drop out of your normal list when you get into the yellow boxes. So the first yellow box, though, you want to start with, though, is the Return. This gives you the Restless Spirit and three Lamp Pads. The Restless Spirit is a great utility model. It's going to help you get shielded so you can, quote-unquote, arc through your other models with Reva's attacks. It also gets corpses down for you for, again, being able to arc through those. Or if you want to do Blasphemous Ritual, which I highly recommend to pulse out focus on everybody. The Lamp Pads are an interesting model. They got a buff recently, so they're probably more worthwhile, whereas before I'd say don't bother with them. But now they may be worth taking. I think it's going to take a little bit of experimenting to figure out where they land. Moving from there, you're going to get Karmic Debt. This is a little bit expensive just because over half the box you're not going to use because they're Thunders models. You are taking this for the Wayudo, who is a very fast, very good mid-range piece that has a lot of burning synergies with it. Going into the orange boxes, you have Carrion Fate. Again, some people like this combination with Riva, where you're able to summon out mindless zombies to let her arc through. And Asura is a keyword model for Revenant, but her synergy isn't all that great. She makes, again, the mindless zombies a little bit better. Then, of course, the next orange box is the Dead Rider. Great model. And finally, you have the Mourners of Scarlet Temptation, which puts things on minus flips for willpower. And you do have some decent attacks against willpower. So I think that's more what you're using these models for if you think you can really abuse that. For the Tormented keyword, this is a little bit odd because there are going to be two recommendation build guides. The reason for this is the first one I'm recommending you buy some old boxes that aren't out in M3E yet. So this is Jackdaw's core box, and then go find some Hanged. These guys are amazing models for Jackdaw. They do everything you want them to do as far as synergy. Terrifying, they can jump around the board, they throw out curses, which Jackdaw's mechanics work on the opponents having upgrades, which their curses are upgrades that you put on enemies. And they attack movement, they stagger things, they can soul stone, they treat the black joker as the red joker, and vice versa. So if the enemy red jokers them, it's now the black joker. Just a great, great piece. Crooked men don't worry about finding the M2E boxes, but I assume once the box does come out, it'll be hanged in Crooked Men. I'm guessing it'll probably be a $40 box, so you'll definitely get that box if it's out. Moving from there, you have Undertow. This gives you Jakuna and the Drowned. This is a lot of hazardous train tricks and a lure. Jakuna is the lure piece. With a 7-stat lure, she can also put up a hazardous train bubble around her. And then the Drowned kind of synergize with that hazardous train. And they also have some blasting attacks. And they're a decent, tough cheaper model. Moving from there, you have the Dead Rider, because Dead Rider's awesome. And then you finally have the Dead Outlaws. These guys can make your other models fast make like money fast or if you want to make your hanged fast that sort of thing interesting tech piece and something you'll want to consider then the second build option is going straight to undertow to start with if you don't want to find the old m2e stuff and then building the list and then going down the line from there again i still highly recommend getting hanged as your secondary purchase in that case and then going down to the orange boxes for the Transmortis keyword, you start with Von Stuck's core box and then buy Honor Roll. This is going to give you the Val Victorian, which is an amazing henchman, probably one of the best henchmen in Rezzers, just because it has a 7 stat attack and puncture on it, so you can Soul Stone for the puncture and guarantee doing massive damage. Plus, she's pretty fast. Her bonus action is great. She just is a very durable piece with being able to Soul Stone damage. She has armor. She has hard to wound. She has a decent amount of wounds. And of course, everything in this crew has studied opponent, so you're going to be drawing an insane amount of cards. 
You also get Student of Steel with this, and all the students are fantastic. All the students are basically armor, hard to wound, lots of wounds. They can all stun as a bonus action. Most of them can heal as either a bonus action or an action, and what they can heal varies on which student it is. They also have fantastic attacks with good triggers. They have the studied opponent so they can draw cards for you. They're just amazing models. All the students are. You just take the one that best fits the opponent. In the case of Student of Steel, they're anti-armor pieces because they can get around armor and shielding. It's built in on their melee attack, and then they have analyzed weakness to allow other people to ignore it as well. Then they are healers of other constructs, so they can heal your other students if you want to do a lot of healing with them. Now, you combined this box with the core box, and you're going to bring Anna Lovelace, who is also probably the best henchman in Rezzers. She has hostile work environment, which is brutal against the right crews when they can't target their own models. And then she also has her gravity well, which makes placing around her annoying, so it shuts down a lot of really good models that have leaps and stuff like that. She has really good attacks. They're a little bit lower statted, but their triggers are great and has a lot of utility. She's also going to be drawing you cards through her bonus action and through studied opponent. And like everything else in this crew, she's super durable. So great model. Then finally, you round things out with the undergraduate has lead the way, and it can do some interesting jumping around a little bit short distances and doing free attacks. It did get a little bit of a nerf, so definitely make sure you get the cards. In fact, for this entire crew, it got a lot of nerfs because it needed it, and it's still a really amazing crew. Moving from those boxes, though, we have Study Group, which gives you the other students. You have Visera and Sinew. Visera is your anti-undead. It gets extra cards when it kills undead models. It has Flay. It has Puncture, so it helps get around those hard-to-wound stats. And it's a normal student. It has all the other student stuff going for it. It doesn't have a heal on this one. Instead, it can obey undead models, so it can obey your other students and stuff like that. Then Visera is your bigger student. It's a little bit faster than the other ones because it has Ambush. And it's a little bit tougher, a little bit cost more, but still has stunning, still has a great attack, still is very tough because of armor hard to wound. For the Urami keyword, this is the most expensive starting list because it's a summoner and she really needs all her core summons. But you start with Karai's core box, then you get Ravenous and Vengeful Ghost. Ravenous, I would say you could probably avoid if not for the fact that she summons the Gaki by killing things and it's just a trigger on her abilities. So you kind of want to have that option because there's going to be times you kill something and you want a Gaki. So you're going to need that box for that. And Vengeful Ghost is the other box. You're buying this because the Gorios are fantastic models. They are the model you're going to be summoning mostly. And then Sation are also another one that you can kill things and summon a Sation. Plus, they give you a lot of movement tricks and that sort of thing. And then you obviously get the Shikome as well, which are mostly scheme runners for you. They can also do some beating. Then expanding from those three green boxes, which gives you the core of all your summons, you then have Undertow. This gives you Jakuna, again, a seven stat lure. It gives you Hazardous Train tricks with her being able to put out a bubble of Hazardous Train. And then the Drown kind of synergize with that. You can also summon in Drown with Karai as well, as it's the one summon piece that doesn't start with the core green boxes. And then finally, you have the Dead Rider, just because it's the Dead Rider and it's awesome. And that does it for this episode. Thank you for watching as always. And stay tuned for the other factions that will be coming out in the upcoming weeks.